Dr. Jacobs, I, I wanted to start with you. Uh, Panasonic has its own numerical weather models, uh, and, and Panasonic uses its own data in some cases, and in many cases uses data from, from NOAA and other sources as well. Can you share with us uh, your weather forecasting models? How does that compare to uh, the, the GFS, the Global Forecasting System, or the European model? How is your model comparing to the others? Uh, so th that's correct. We use our own data. We bundle that with all the publicly available data. We assimilate that into a suite of different models, our flagship model being a global model. It differs slightly from NCEPs in both the data assimilation scheme as well as a lot of the modifications in the physics. Uh, its performance really depends on how you verify it. If you verify it through sort of the standard anomaly correlations, it's slightly ahead of NCEP. The European Center had a major upgrade in March. It's slightly lagging the European Center. If you verify it through other means, particularly case studies, there's been some major weather events over the last two years where it's outperformed both. Um, if you actually consider the fact that we have complete control over the system, it's fully customizable from a business perspective, it's, it's, it's highly advantageous because we can write out files in increments, levels, and variables that you wouldn't normally get from the government center because our motivation is, is actually helping other businesses. We believe that the Weather Service's mission is to protect life and property. Has anybody from NOAA or the Department of Defense reached out to you to, to get information on how you're able to accomplish this? Yes. Um, I actually have some meetings at the Pentagon lined up shortly. I'll be giving a seminar at NCEP next month on some of our data assimilation methods. Uh, our software engineers are in constant contact with the engineers at NCEP, and to the extent that it doesn't negatively impact our business model, we do share information with them. And the intent uh, with the model is, is to what? You want to license uh, the, the outcomes, the outputs of your model? Is that your intent? Uh, well, the primary intent would be to customize and develop products and applications to sell to other industries. They, they would be products that you can't normally derive from the publicly generated weather model data. Uh, as far as the government agencies are concerned, uh, the possibility of licensing some of the software does exist. And, and my understanding is your model is a global model to establish the global initial conditions for, uh, for weather forecasting. Can you share with us, does your model have the ability to, to, to do uh, mesoscale forecasting or even microscale forecasting for my constituents that are uh, obviously hit with severe weather from time to time? Right. So, so one of the reasons why we decided to run our own global model is every regional model needs what they call boundary conditions provided by a global model. So we run the global model to provide lateral boundary conditions to high resolution <laughs> nested regional models. We currently run several different nested regions running from four to two and a half kilometers. And within those nested regions, we can have high resolution domains down to sub one kilometer. Got it. And uh, do Mr. Block, um, how has NOAA reacted to your innovation with weather, weather modeling and forecasting? They've, they have expressed considerable interest in the, especially in the ag weather network data that we provide. And we look forward to working more closely with them to figure out how we can use that information or even extend or expand that information to add things like soil temperature or soil moisture to the observations we make. Awesome. Uh, Dr. McDonald, how many GPS radio occultation um, sensors has Spire launched to date? So far, so far I think we're uh, kind of at the beginning. We actually have uh, uh, four satellites and then two test satellites, and we're just learning how to, uh, to get the uh, quality out of them that we need. And is your intent to establish your own numerical weather models as well, or to piggyback on the numerical weather models of others? Uh, our intent is not to establish our own weather models, except to the extent that we want to be able to test the value of these so that we can talk to our customers and, and show that it's valuable. So, so your objective would then be to provide a service to others that are providing the model. It, it, it could be Panasonic. It could be, uh, it could be NOAA. It could be others. That's correct. OK. Um, I've been encouraged that NOAA is moving forward with the commercial weather data pilot as outlined in the bipartisan House passed weather bill, H.R. 1561. Very pleased with that. 
Uh, Dr. McDonald, can you give me your take on NOAA's approach to working with the private sector to incorporate data such as SPIRE data into, into, their, into their weather models? Uh, I think that um, we have to, to see about the future. I think the ideas in the Fair Weather Act and the, uh, and the um, experience already with private data being available that uh, Neil Jacobs just talked about shows that uh, uh, the path is there. So we're hoping that uh, we can have that partnership with the data also. Excellent. And I'd like to, uh, on my time is out, I'll recognize the ranking member from Oregon, Ms. Bonamici, for five minutes.